So I did put up my back brakes wrong. I was using another cable here, which was one that I had made, this one here. And, you know, I had not really thought about using the stuff it came with when I should have. These things have little caps on them. And then they came with these, which then you put those little rubber things on it they came with. Uh, and I have another extra one there, but these things here simply screw into this. And I really thought this was too short, but actually this is the same length as this cable I had bought and measured, so. I also didn't have the right banjo nut on it. I had this one over here, and as you can see with, with this one here, it has a smaller top to it here, yeah. Smaller top area, whereas the right one that was in the package also uh, has a much bigger um, area here. So we can zoom in there. So as you can see, this is the one that's supposed to go on. It has a much bigger top, much smaller area on top. See, this is the top right here. So I was using the wrong size banjo because you can see that this is the original one I had bought for it. And as you can see, it's very thin. So these real ones here are very, very thick. So they add on a lot more. Uh, and so I wasn't able even to close this properly. <laughs> was sticking out so so now what we're going to do here is I will screw these on so essentially we just screw these things on uh, tighten them up and then put them on the, the bike 700 has the same cable on it and using the same banjo stuff so I'm gonna just do the same thing that it did so we're gonna put this through here Put that that way, and then it will go like this way. There you go. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is mount this onto the, the bike. Believe it or not, we do have a problem with the brakes. So, th the main thing is that um, whenever you push this all the way in with this spacer. Uh, the spacer actually pushes up against that bearing and prevents it from moving. With this, this is pushed out too far. It doesn't line up with the uh, center of the rear caliper. Or not rear caliper, but the rear master cylinder. So um, the, uh, the, the problem is that um, I need to be able to push this in more. So this needs to be shorter and I need to have a, a washer in front of it. Now, the other thing I have to be careful about though is that this gets really close to the bolt, or to the, to the nut that's on the swing arm. So, this is what, you know, looking at here. There, you can see that uh, you scrape up against this at some point. But you need this to be in the center. Center there. So, as you can see, whenever we have we have this on, it's going to push against that bearing, and it's not going to be able to spin. So, either it's going to push against this bearing, it kind of locks in there in that groove. And so, when I tighten it up. I'm not able to spin, but if I put a big washer in there, it's able to spin without being hanged up. Now, the other problem was that uh, this here um, ends up being off center, and so it lines up with the side of the uh, rear master cylinder and so it gets hung up and in order to put it in the center I would need to either bend this here or get something smaller than this and have a washer in there. Now the other thing is that I've already cut this and I've removed the bolt that used to be on top of there because it was all the way extended down to there and the bolt um, was there and this made this so long um, that uh, it was, whenever it's in place, it was already pushing like a quarter through on the master cylinder. So this here shortens it so there's a tiny bit of gap at the top position. And I can also eliminate that by uh, unscrewing that a little bit, but uh, at least where it is now, there's a tiny bit of a gap 
until it actually breaks, which is the same as what I have the 700 is set at. So now it's a matter of finding the right size of this, making sure it doesn't scrape, making that center, and then bolting it up. Okay, so I do have this, which is three-fourths the size. If I put that in with the washer, will that be enough? So let, let's take a look at that. So in order to get this to be free spinning, I can't have any washers that touch this. So instead, everything has to touch the inner race of the bearing. So I was able to find a little spacer I had. And this makes it in the perfect position now. Now the bolt gets too far though, because of the swing arm. I don't want to do that, so I gotta cut the bolt. I can't find a bolt on the right size. Well, maybe I could use that one. Let me try that one. If that one works, then... Whoa. Yeah, that one should work. Yeah, so... You can see here that now I have this little thing that touches the inner race. And then this bolt here should touch the inner race. And if everything's just touching the inner race, then it should just work fine. And there's enough clearance with the spacing and it's pretty much perfectly in the middle. So this is pretty much as good as it gets. So as you can see, I have the new bolt on there. And the new spacers in there. Now I just need to do this correct mounting here, which is where this more shallow angle comes in and it just bolts right to there. You gotta tighten it up, that's it. That's all it needs to be done. And then I need to get the, uh, the basin, whatever they call it, that holds the fluid here, and stick it up here somewhere. Now this frame, oh yeah, it has the little uh, place right there where you put some bolted on. Of course, I found those kind of problematic in my old, in my Mako over here. I found about problematic. As you can see, it's been problematic to bolt them to that and then try to actually use it, so <laughs> it's got zip ties around it. I also figured out that um, what you have to do with these here, I believe, is you actually have to drill them yourself. <laughs> so, like a lot of things Zable. And I ordered one from South Calmaco because I don't feel like doing that, but I think that, you know, this is here like this, and then essentially you have to drill a hole through this then, and drill a hole through this that would come out down here somehow, I guess. I don't know. It's very tight, though. But yeah, essentially I think you would have to pretty much drill your, your own hole here. Then you have to drill through the side of it and create your own thing. You know, either that or you have to have something that would press this for you. But, uh... Yeah, the only other thing I can think of is that uh, you pretty much have to make your own holes and how you would bolt on the cable in order for this to work. Yeah. The other Mako has some clips right here for it, as you can see. So I have to do something about that. But since it's the same deal, so now the back brake is hooked up. I do need to find a master cylinder before I can fill it. You can see that it's only got a tiny bit of play here. 
need to get a spring, but pretty much yeah, it looks like it's uh, coming together now, though. The tiger is on. And we are going to need to get that uh, master cylinder up to it. There it is. Master cylinder thing. Hold the fluids. So, we've got the tuggers for the back. Keep over here. I gotta figure out which one of these to use. But yeah, I think it's just gonna use one of these new ones. The same thing is on the Mega 700, so. So, yeah, I'll use this. I'm not too sure I wanna use that. I'm gonna see if I can get a new hose. So, so I'm gonna get a new hose. I also couldn't find any good. I think I bought that hose a long time ago, this clear hose, but it wasn't fuel line, so I didn't use it. So, I don't think that's right. Another hose that I have is too small, and there's some black hoses in there that possibly could be used, but I'm thinking to just get some new stuff I can find anything. So I think get those two, and then I can get the back brakes working. Once you get that, hook at the fuel line. So, yeah, it's getting close. Not too much here to do. Plastic's all bolted on now, you know. This side of this plastic's not bolted on for this fender because that's where the exhaust would come. And the funny thing is that, if you look at this bike, this side here is where the exhaust would come out on the YZ because that's what these plastics are from. So you can see it's got like this little you know, thing under there, you know, to cushion this thing on, on the exhaust pipe. But yeah, you can see it on, on this bike here, I take it out. This is, you know. And so you can see here, I mounted, does I need a spark arrestor? I mounted this CR500, you know, exhaust. You can see that uh, just lay on top of there, but so yeah, this bolts in right to there. So that's what I essentially end up doing to this one. So yeah, it's getting close.